Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a pita bread. It's a bit trickier pita bread. Essentially, it's a very basic dough, but it's the way you roll it out and it's the temperature that you bake in the oven. Now, it's set at 240, which is found, so it's going to be slightly higher than that. Turn your oven up as high as it'll go because you want that sting. When it hits this raw dough and it's flat, it'll blow up and that's what we're expecting in a good pita bread. In the bowl, I've got my strong white flour, into which I'm going to add some fast action yeast to the side. Obviously, the thing is going to make it grow. Then I'm going to add some salt for flavor and then some water. It's just cool water straight in. A little bit to start off with just to bind it all together. Get your spoon in there. It should be quite a soft dough, this. The tighter it is, or the less water you put in, the, the dough remains quite plasticine, like you want it slacker, you want it looser. So straight away you see that the water's just totally being absorbed, so you can add a bit more water. So you give it a good mix together, and then once you see that it's starting to form a dough, the best thing to do is get your hand in next, the best thing to feel a dough, you know it when you put your hands in. You're thinking, actually that feels, doesn't feel too bad at all. It's coming together as a lump. It's, feel how soft that is? When you hold it, it drops. So I'm gonna use a little bit of flour on this bench. Put your dough in there. Gently fold it into the middle. Feel how loose or slack or wet, soft this dough is. You can afford to add a little bit of flour to it just to tighten it up a little bit, stop it being as sticky. But you see how quick it breaks? And then massage the dough. Roll it up. You fold it and constantly stretching that gluten, getting it to mix properly, getting the gluten to bind, making it smoother and smoother. The more you play with it, the smoother it will get. You do that for about three or four minutes and you'll see it gets smoother and smoother. Nice little lump of dough. You want to rest that now. If you don't cover the dough, what happens is the air around your kitchen or if you're going to leave it in a breezy area, will create a skin on the dough and it just stops it from growing, just that little bit. So you want to cover it up, keep it soft inside, and it will grow. So this one's been resting now for about an hour. See how stringy it is and how stretchy it is. It's just, it's growing. You can almost, you can see the membrane through it as well. It's nice and loose. So I'm going to grab a little piece of this dough a bit like you would a pizza. Just shape it into a round, just using your fingers. Flatten it out. Use plenty of flour, I don't want this sticking at all. Because I'm going to roll it fairly thin. The shape of a pitta, it's entirely down to you. There's no hard and fast rule of a pitta bread should be oval, a pitta bread should be round. You can do whatever you want. I tend to make it a little bit more oval. How thick are you looking at going? I'm going to take this dough to the width of a, a sort of a pound coin. Think of the depth of a coin, that's the sort of thickness I'm going to take this to. So again, just make sure it's all the same. And once you've got that shape, get your tray ready. Pop it onto the middle of the tray and pop that straight into a hot oven. And leave it for about 10, 15 minutes. Now that has been in the oven for about 12 minutes. And if you look really closely, it's got a bit of color on here and here. It's just off white and that's baked beautiful. It's full of air. So the weight of a pitta is baking on the tray. So that remains still, because it's not gonna float up. So one base is in there. The yeast has been forced to work. So it's creating carbon dioxide, which then blows the top away from the bottom, creating a pocket. And that is how you make a, a pizza bread. Now, if I take that off there. So now I'm going to cut this, but I wouldn't normally cut it. Normally, you just pile them on the top. I'm only cutting it to show you what it looks like inside. It will crisp up if you do cut it, if that's what you want. Or leave them the way they are. Because of the steam inside the pitta, it softens the lid and the whole thing collapses down. It's hot. There's the opening inside the pizza bread. So if you're going to make pitta at home, you can add uh, nigella seeds to this or sesame seed or poppy seed into the dough as well, and that creates another bit of flavor. But what you've essentially got is a, hello, 
Uh, so you end up with a, a gorgeous bread like that, which you can fill with everything. But to serve it with some hummus, I've got some beetroot hummus here, I've got some guacamole. You serve that with the pizza bread, and there you go. It's as easy as that.